Hello, Hello. welcome to a very special New Sun MMA interview. I'm your host Kieran Cobley and today I'm here with Paddy the Paddy Pimmy. This interview is in partnership with MMA 365, giving the edge in MMA vetting. Paddy, how are you doing, Matt? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. So I've got to ask, man, what are you doing down in Leeds? I mean, we're just going back into the gym, uh, playing for the amount of Muay Thai world champion to produce. What are you doing down there, man? Getting my Thai better, you know what I mean? Um, it's the best best place in the country, or the UK, in my opinion, to come and get your, uh, your Thai come to a, a better level. And I've been here for the and I can, I can feel it getting better already. You know what I mean? uh, everyone here is saying it feels better, it looks better, you know what I mean? I can't wait to go home and test it with your normal coaches, you know what I mean? And see, see what they think. But doing pads with Richard, Liam, Andy, you know what I mean? It's, it's next level gear. Yeah. So what's been like working with Richard Smith, uh, Liam Harrison, one you know, one championship fighter, multi time multi time world champion you've been doing pattern this morning. Uh, what's it like working with those guys? It's amazing, you know what I mean? These are some of the best in the world at what they do. My uh, my, my Muay Thai coach, um, he's been trying to get me to come down here for a while and I don't know why I haven't to be honest, I've just been doing other things and getting other stuff done but I've come down here now and I've realised what he's been saying to me for so long that this is where you need to come if you want to get your own tie back and he said it himself, he, um, he was just doing his normal tie box and then he come here and he levelled up and I, I feel like I've done that already. Yeah. So, coach, you come down here or is it? Yeah, my, my coach, um, my tie coach Diamond is friends with Liam, Richard, uh, Andy, and uh, he used to train with them all, so he, he put us in contact, he told me to come down here, and he, he saw this, and then I've just come down, booked a little Airbnb, my dad's coming with me, my dad's making sure to stick on my diet, cook me healthy meals and that, so I think this, this week's been boss, to be honest, it's been absolutely yeah. yeah. So, this is not the first time you've been here for a while, you were out with an injury, the first fight happened just over 12 months. Yeah, what, what the injuries been keeping you out and how, how's it doing now? My wrist, you know what I mean? I, I, sh I shouldn't have fought last year. I had surgery less than a half month before the fourth. Yeah. I, um, I was training up until the week before with a splint on underneath me, underneath me wraps. You know what yeah. I mean? I wasn't healed at all. I was nowhere near fit to fight. You know what I mean? If, if I was fighting on the, like a UFC in America, the, I wouldn't have been made to clear, I don't think. Yeah. If you would have said, no, you, you can't fight. So it's just me. I don't, I'm fighting in my, my hometown for the world title. I'm not going on. Yeah. I'm still nearly choked the ball. Yeah. I mean, Soren came back at the time doing press last show. And Soren came back, and even though you had your wrist, he still had a raspy voice and came back in. Do you think that maybe for this, oh, if, if the wrist had been fully healed? The wrist was fully healed. I don't like it. No, no two ways about it. If I had my left hand underneath, he was going to kick. But I had my right arm underneath, what was half the strength, more than more than half the strength of my left hand. Yeah. And I'm right handed as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, you first fight back in, in the months, and you're coming back into a lightweight division, but now it's so stacked, it's cage, arguably the most stacked division. What's it like coming back into a division where you know you're the top guys and everyone's wanting for you? That's what I mean, it, it is the top division in cage, there's, there's no division in there, what's more stacked? All the other divisions have got about three people in this sort of this, this, the lightweight division's got about eight top fighters in it. Everyone still mentions my name. I haven't fought in, when I fight, it'll be 15 years since I fought in, in interviews and after fights. Everyone mentions me. No one mentions all the people who are active. You know what I mean? Everyone mentions my name because they know who the boy is. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a division full of like Mason Jones, that's champion, current champion Jai Herbert, it's the title of the UFC after the fight. Uh, Owen Van Elliott, up and from a, you know, what, you know, out of those guys, you know, who do you think real, recently is like the biggest challenge you've got in this division? Well, I'll be honest with you, right there, I think Jai Herbert is the best out of them all. Jai, um, I think he wins this fight in the UFC, to be honest, I do. But Steve O'Keefe showed, put him on his back, he's not like he's saying, I'm the mean, he's uncomfortable. Yeah. I'll have to do that to him. Same with Mason Jones, he fought Manta Kiwi the other day, it was a lopsided decision, but I finished that fight, you know what I mean? I have on top of someone who's got them for that long, I finished that fight, you know what I mean? Um, a lot of people in the cage where his lightweight division are overrated, and I still think to this day that I'm underrated. A lot of, a lot of aspects of my game are underrated, people think I'm just a submission artist. 
So have you been keeping tabs with him? I spoke to your teammate Andy Hudson a few months ago and he was saying outside of his training, he doesn't really watch a whole lot of MMA. So do you keep tabs with him? I'm not. I've got other stuff going on in my life. Oh. I'm in the gym, I'm in the gym. Eight, nine hours, ten hours a day. So yeah. I don't uh, I don't go out my way to watch the uh, fights. I watched Manta Kiwi versus me the other day. Yeah. And I watched all of them because I speak to all of them. Me and all of them get on. But, um, I watched them fights, but I want to see what happened with Mason Jones and Manta Kiwi because whoever won that fight, uh, if Jack Hughes win and gets signed, the winner of me, Desme, is a good chance of fighting Mason Jones and Jones versus Manta Kiwi for a vacant yeah. belt. So, I watched that fight with interest, but you know, it's just, I can't get over how bad man the TV is. He's, he's a so terrible fighter. So, so now, this is the third fight, you know, it could be 15 months uh, out of competition when you come back. But you're not fighting your hometown in Liverpool, you're going down south, you're fighting in London, uh, the Indy got the O2, we, we know we fought there before, and it's a rowdy audience. But what's the audience there like compared to when you fight in the Echo? Because I've been in the Echo when you fought, and it is unbelievable. The noise, the noise of the fans there. But what's the like difference to the Indigo? Well, I, I think I've fought more times in London than I have. You know, I've had, uh, it's funny recently, I've had a lot of people saying um, he doesn't fight, in, he only fights in Liverpool, he only fights in Liverpool. If you look at most of my fights, <laughs> most of them are in London and in other cities, you know what I mean? And, I've seen a lot of people put a name, oh, he'll, he'll lose and have another yeah. year off, he'll have a year off, people say that. I've had a year off twice because of injuries, and people forget that I had four fights in that month in 2016. You know what I mean? I'm in the belt of four Grimshaw people. I've fought Teddy Viler in June or July, then I fought Crown Florian in September, and then I fought the Rosa in November. You know what I mean? People, people go on like that. I sit out and don't fight. Whenever I can fight, I fucking fight. Yeah. I mean, this when, when I fight in London anyway, I think people are coming. Yeah. It's going to be light in Liverpool. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's from the audience, that, that is, it's so complicated. Yeah. The theatre sort of setting up, I mean, it's just, it's a venue, it's it's just going to be like fighting in the Echo for me. There's going to be that many people there for me in the shop. Going bananas when I walk out, you know what I mean? I, I, I know it's just going to be like fighting at home. Loads of coffee, you love me. I'm, I'm a little fan hated, lad. I'm a little fan hated and. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. So, let's talk about the opponent now. Donovan Desme, he is the side of the fight, the lightweight of 15 and 4, 7 KO wins, 3 wins by submission. You know, how is it, how are you preparing to take on an opponent sort of like him? See what are you doing? I'm not, um, I'm not doing nothing else for the audience. I know I'm better than him. I know I'm better than him, you know what I mean? In, in every area of the game, people underestimate my striking, and he has got, he has got a big one, as you've seen against Jacobson. He yeah. can hear people, but Jacobson's got no chin. Mm. And being finished by Pedro, Vicky is yeah. the two big bombs, you know what I mean? J Jacobson can't hear the punch, I can't. And I've proved that in my fights, I've never been, never been knocked out in my life. It's funny you say that, because I was like, you famously said scouts, we don't get knocked out. Yeah. I will not be getting knocked out, there's no chance. Yeah. But is, is he the is he the realest threat of getting knocked out being knocked out in your face? Because I mean he's a proven knockout artist. Nah. Just, no one's knocking me out. I'll have to get into the UFC and have someone who's cutting twenty pounds overnight to knock me out. So Desmond this is a lot from your last throwing into you he's probably a wrestler. Uh, high pressure fighter. How has this camp differed to the market, or is there no difference in the digital camp itself? The, the camp compared to back a million times different. The camp was bad. I was just striking and doing little bits of jiu jitsu, what I could, what weighing in my hands. I didn't do any wrestling leading up to the fight. I didn't do any standing conditioning because I didn't do nothing with my hands. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's going to be a completely different me in there. Yeah. That, that fight I went to was 80%. No, and, yeah. and he still could be. Yeah. Now, I thought I'd ask you about that because I thought I think you have a strong opinion on this. He went from winning the lightweight to then also go drop, drop down to featherweight. And take Do you think he did that to try and avoid opponents in the lightweight division? Yeah. He was scared of Jack Grant. He didn't want to fight Jack Grant because he knew Jack Grant was going to fight it under 100%. Yeah. Son him back on the 40 if he, didn't, if he knew I was going to fight under 100%. Yeah. 